So today we're going to add in the third rail to my 3018 CNC machine. I've been meaning to do this upgrade for quite a while and I'm really excited to get it done. This is the last major upgrade that I'll be applying to this machine. We're kind of on the limits now of what we can achieve with this frame. But I purposely left this one to last because we kind of need to fit it around everything else. And we don't want to sort of make any contact with the power supply. There's quite a bit of design work involved here. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and I'll show you what I've done. So why add a third rail in the first place? Two should be fine, right? Well, in theory, yes, two should be fine. But the smooth rods used on cheap machines like this are not that strong. And as soon as you apply a bit of force to the spindle, you will see that flex. And you can see it clearly here in the video. By adding a third rail, we can help reduce this flex. We're not going to eliminate it, but it'll drastically reduce it and just improve the quality of our cuts a little bit. Machines of a much higher grade do tend to come with supported linear rails. And this is what you'd use if you were really serious about cutting harder materials. But as you know, this is a hobbyist machine and we're just trying to maximize its capabilities while keeping the cost as low as possible. We can compare this at the end once I've added the third rod and I'll let you decide for yourself whether you think it's worth the upgrade or not. Okay, so this is my redesign of the X-axis and you can see it's relatively similar to the one that came stock with the machine. The only difference is I've added in uh, an, an extrusion here at the back that's going to allow us to have that third rail. And this kind of L shape is going to provide a lot more stability and make the whole carriage a lot more rigid and hopefully eliminate a lot of that wobble that we saw at the end of the spindle. One other problem that I solved here was the problem of the Z axis smooth rods. On the original design, the holes for the smooth rods here are left open. And I actually had a few instances with the machine where the smooth rod would slip back up through the hole and when you're pulling your Z axis up, it would drag the smooth rod with it. So what you'd end up with is a smooth rod sticking up here above the X carriage. And basically that completely ruins whatever job you're working on because you have to reposition the shaft and it's just a whole pain. So what I did was I just put four holes in the top here and I've added a cover. So this simple little cover just covers up those holes for the Z shafts and it stops them falling out. So you tap them in from the top, they slot into these holes underneath then you cover them up and they're not going anywhere. I'm really surprised this wasn't on the original design. It seems like a no brainer, but there we go. I fixed it now and it's gonna be a lot more reliable. In regard to this additional extrusion here at the bottom, I wanted to make this as strong as possible given that it's gonna be plastic. I printed this with a very high infill. I think it was 80 or 90%. Just gonna be extremely rigid without wasting too much material. I printed it in PETG and honestly, it is very, very strong, if not stronger than the original part. And there's definitely no flex or anything in the plastic when we're trying to add a force to the spindle. In addition to changing the X carriage, I also created my own design for the motor holder. So this is quite simple. It's minimal height, so we keep the majority of our Z axis travel. And uh, we've just got two holes here for two bolts that will clamp down onto the motor, and it works perfectly. I know a few of you raised some concerns about the potential of the plastic melting while the spindle's running. I haven't had any issues with that at all. I've been keeping an eye on it, and uh, the plastic. It's just handling it, it's PTG, it's designed for high temps. And in all honesty, the motor isn't getting that hot. That being said, I'll most definitely keep an eye on it when I start using harder materials that will draw more load from the motor. So I got these things printed. As I said before, I'm using black PTG. This was the finished result. Nice looking print and it's nice and bulky, which should give us a lot of strength and rigidity in the X axis. So the next job then was to just disassemble the X carriage take all the Z axis parts apart. And this could take a while and sometimes it's difficult to get those rods out and especially these bearings. You have to tap them out carefully using a mallet. You need to then place those bearings into the new part along with the Z screw as well. And then this should all go back together. As I said before, this is the bit that I've corrected. So the previous design had these smooth rods where they could just fall out. But as you can see, I've created this cover that just snaps over it and you can then bolt that down and it's not going anywhere and they are nice and snug. Next job was to get the Z axis stepper back into place. And again, I had to redesign this part in, in a certain way. The one that came with the machine looked really flimsy and just brittle and weak. So I really thickened that up and I added a recess for the cap head bolts. The recess for the bolts ensures that we're not sacrificing any Z travel to bolt that motor on. 
After reassembling the z-axis I could then attach that back onto the x-axis rails and just check it to ensure that it's moving smoothly on all three rails and that there's no friction or any kind of weird forces acting on the x-carriage. As you can see I left plenty of clearance at the back so that we're not interfering with the power supply or any cables. You do have to tidy up the cables with some cable ties but that's you know pretty standard anyway with any kind of machine. After feeling pretty confident that the x-carriage moves smoothly along the rails it was time to reinstall the screw rod the x-axis motor and get the spindle motor installed back into the mount. So here's a sort of final look at the majority of the upgrades on the machine. The only thing I've got left to install at this point are the limit switches but they're really straightforward. I think I've done a pretty good job here. You can even see I added a cable holder at the top to stop any cables rubbing on the power supply and potentially causing any damage. Here's another shot of that cover that I designed to eliminate that major design flaw from the original stock design. Basically this just stops those shafts from shooting up towards the motor when we're trying to pull up our z-axis. On the new motor bracket I increased the spindle distance from the rails just to ensure that that fan isn't going to catch the stepper motor at our highest z range. And again here's a shot of the back. I know a few of you were interested in how I kind of mounted the power supply and what board I'm actually using at the back. So there we go, you can see that in the shot there. The only thing left to do is compare the before and after. So here's the wobble on the spindle before my upgrade. And here you can see the wobble on the spindle after the upgrade. There is still wobble there, which was expected, but it's drastically reduced. And that means we're gonna be able to cut with slightly harder materials. And hopefully I'll see some improvements in the quality of my cuts. So to give my final thoughts on this machine then, so far I'm extremely pleased with it. The upgrades I've done have definitely been helpful. They've definitely improved the machine. And it's not something I've done just for the sake of doing it. You know, that would just be a waste of money. I will say that now I do believe that this machine is at its limits. You wouldn't want to go beyond this in terms of upgrades. And in those sort of circumstances, you are better off just buying a higher quality machine or a more expensive machine. Because we're now at a point where the limitations of this machine are more to do with the frame itself than any of the parts. And that's when you really want to start looking at those better machines that are made out of much higher quality materials and much more rigid. That being said, these upgrades are now going to enable me to work with multiple different types of woods, hardwoods such as oak, all the way down to the softer woods. And for me personally, that's exactly what I wanted. You know, I want to get to learn the cam process. I want to learn speeds and feeds and all that can be done on a relatively cheap machine like this. Now, if you're looking to sort of do mass manufacturing, on a machine like this or mill metals i wouldn't recommend that at all mainly because it's just not built for it it's a hobbyist machine you're going to be really limited in what you can output and if you're looking to do sort of industrial type work where you're pumping out products all the time that's when you want to start looking at bigger machines where you can do nesting and all that kind of cool stuff but if you're a beginner like me and you just want to get stuck in get learning get into the process learn about different end mills and different speeds, different feeds, all these things that are quite alien terms if you've come from a 3D printing background. This machine is gonna allow you to explore that as much as possible for a very, very low cost. So what I plan to do over the next few weeks is put together a, a bill of materials essentially. So I'm gonna list all the parts, including where I got the machine. Most of it was eBay. Um, you'll probably be able to find alternative links just through the name of the components alone. But I'll create a list of all the parts, the costs, links to where you can get the parts, and just kind of summarize how much the upgrade process costs me. I'll make a video on it as well. And then I'm going to release that out through my website. So if you want to know when that comes out, make sure you go subscribe to my newsletter. I'll leave a link in the description below. And that way you won't miss the update. So that's it for this one. As always, I hope you've learned something. Hope you're excited about the machine and the CNC direction that we're going with the channel. I'm still working on the Raptor project. I know th loads of you have been asking me about that. That's ongoing. I'm waiting for some parts. That will be continuing very soon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a rating. If you're going to dislike the video, at least let me know why in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video.